more than three, increased pregnancy rate in IVF cycle is there if it is so. And you always should check subendometrial blood flow because the presence of pulsatile subendometrial blood flow signifies increase implantation rate. So treatment of um, thin endometrium will be discussed. First comes lifestyle modification. This is very important. We advise our these type of patient always counsel for healthy diet, weight reduction, yoga, meditation, and exercise. Hysteroscopic lysis may have to be done. In many cases, hormone manipulation by estrogen and GnRH agonist is to be done. Vasoactive measures like aspirin, vitamin E, pentoxifilin, and vaginal use of sildenafil. Intrauterine infusion of GCSF. Avoidance of few medicines used in uh, seasonal allergy treatment as these might decrease the blood flow to genital organ. Try acupressure and acupuncture. In many cases, newer treatment like platelet rich plasma, PRP, and stem cells, they are coming usually. And usually, there is an indi individualization of the treatment in each and every case. So, in the thin endometrium, you have to treat different causes that varies case to case. Treatment strategies for anti estrogen effects of the clomiphene is where the clomiphene induction is associated with the thin endometrium, you can change to letrozole or tamoxifen. Routes of administration of estrogen may be oral, may be intravaginal, or may be transdermal. The oral estrogen advantage is ease of administration, convenient to subject, uh, painless, and disadvantage is fast, fast to bypass metabolism and supraphysiological levels of E2. Transvaginal, many of us are now using transvaginal way and we counsel well the patient for the local irritation and discomfort. Many patients, they are very fussy not using this and patient compliance is poor in many cases. Transdermal estrogen, Many of us are using in many uh, part of the country most stable steady state levels of the estradiol is there and no first pass metabolism is there. Disadvantage is skin differences especially the racial differences is there. Age and the site of drug application have been reported to alter the transdermal absorption. SCG priming is a very important SCG endometrial priming for 7 days in the proliferative phase with the estrogen in the frozen cycle seem promising uh, and it is a significant there are many studies which say that it causes significant improvement in the thickness and the pregnancy outcome here 150 IU SCG from day 8 till day 14 or 15 along with the estrogen in FET and the zodan egg cycles are being given pentoxifilin and tocopherol pentoxifilin is a potential antioxidant and even have an anticoagulant effect and uh, can cause uh, vasodilatation also increase the uh, decrease the inflammation and uh, combination of tocopherol and the pentoxifilin is to uh, advantageous is uh, in being uh, uh, where are the cases of radiation and induced fibrosis? L arginine, uh, we all uh, IVF specialists are using L arginine, a uh, nitric oxide donor, and the relaxes vascular smooth muscles of the endometrium. It decreases the resistive index. So, L arginine treatment proved to be very effective in many cases. One of the very important study was there that shows that. It increases the endometrial thickness in many of the trial cases. So, uh, sildenafil citrate is uh, again a very commonly used product by all of us. Uh, there is a supporting use of vaginal sildenafil for improving the endometrial thickness. These are the different studies which we see, and this is a very important study by the Cochrane, which see that which shows that in many patients when it is being used, it uh, increases the endometrial thickness. These are the different studies and the doses of sildenafil. Now recent agent that is the GCSF. Many of us have definitely used this GCSF and uh, there is a case series of four patients with a thin endometrium which shows that between 3 and 3.5 endometrium was there and they failed to improve with the oral and the vaginal estrogen as well as with the vaginal sildenafil. In these cases when they use GCSF infusion 
three hundred microgram two to nine days before the ET had a significant increase up to seven mm within the forty-eight hours. The endometrial scratch, which we were using age old, now again has come into existence because endometrial scratching in the luteal phase of one cycle prior to IVF cycle increases the endometrial thickness and even the pregnancy rate. The tissue injury produces such endometrial biopsy, um, uh, induces stem cell differentiation and increases the endometrial receptivity. Inflammatory reactions which favor the implantation like NK cells, macrophages employed to local injury are secreted thus resulting in successful in, uh, implantation in these cases. PRP, a newer approach has been suggested for the treatment of thin endometrium in the form of intrauterine infusion of platelet rich plasma. This was uh, first uh, uh, declared by Chant Y in 2015. This, uh, there was a pilot study which was carried out in five women with the refractory thin endometrium. They infused 0.5 ml of autologous PRP in the uterine cavity on day 9, 10 and again on 13 to 14 days of the cycle. While the patient was on the estradiol valerate, there was a satisfactory growth of the endometrium in all five and the four live birth and one missed abortion was there in these cases. Similar pilot studies was also uh, done on the 10 uh, patients and they got a good result. So in the PRP, you take the blood sample and the, this is in my lab. I am doing the PRP. We um, uh, centrifuge it and um, uh, there are three layers in this. We take the plated rich middle layer uh, to infuse. This can be in, uh, then instilled either intrauterine or by the hysteroscopic guidance sub endo um, mitral lining. The other agent which is recently upcoming is the stem cell therapy. Hematopoietic and the non-hematopoietic bone marrow derived from stem cells are recruited on the endometrium. So studies have supported the presence of uh, progenitor cells in the endometrium and these cells prove to have a high regenerative capacity. Stem cells are able to generate human endometrium after transplantation in the mice. So endometrial reconstruction with the autologous stem cell therapy and freshly prepared PRP has gained considerably attention and seemed to provide a breakthrough in reproduction. So what is the stem cell? It is a mesenchymal cell and is a primitive cell with the ability to regenerate. There is a cell replacement, paracrine pathway and dying cell clearance. By these, there are many studies that thin endometrium and the non-receptive endometrium that goes into the endometrial regeneration and prove to be receptive and we need more and more studies regarding this. So endometrial reconstruction with the stem cell therapy, the ideal candidates we have to select the patient with the persistent thin endometrium with the repeated implantation failure. Treated cases of tuberculosis with a thin endometrium which do not respond as such. The Asherman syndrome grade 3 are the patients who need it most. So this is my lab. In summary, thin endometrium and the success outcome A thin endometrium can impact the success of fertility treatment. Proper endometrial development is crucial for the successful embryo implantation, vaginal, sildenafil and many other these mode which I have discussed are proved to be useful. PRP and the stem cell therapy shows promise, especially in refractory cases. However, further research is needed to assess safety, effectiveness, and the cost. Thank you very much for the patient hearing. Thank you so much, ma'am, for the nice.